Well, hi everybody. Sorry about the bit of delay, but uh, we are setting up and recording here at the church and trying to connect again. So we just want to tell everybody, please be patient with us as we do this and we go through the learning process and just be patient. That's all I can say. It's um, not only on our end, it's on Facebook's end and uh, the internet and all that. So it's just taking time to do that. But anyhow, I'm glad that you're here with us tonight. We're so glad that you've come out and, and want to be a part of this and share with us as we do our Wednesday evening Bible study. We want to just welcome everybody. We thank you that you're on here. Um, when you do go to this video, make sure you share it with people. Share it with your friend group. What an awesome way to reach out and, and get people to be involved with church and to be connected. So share it, like it, comment. And the more you do that, the more the word gets out there. Be sharing the gospel with everybody so thank you once again for being with us and if anything does go wrong on this we will shut it down and we will just go re-record it and then post it in a little bit but so far so good so hang in there with us and i'm just thankful that we can still connect what an amazing thing we can do is connect together and be a part of the body of christ and be here with tree of life people and everybody else watching and we thank you for taking time out i'm excited about the series we're doing and pastor's teaching on prayer tonight so that's going to be awesome we can always learn about that and one thing we do want to say is um, thank you so much for those that have been faithful in their giving and supporting uh, the church financially you know our finances still need to come in and we thank you those who give and keep giving and there's plenty of ways to give you can give online and what you need to do is just go to our web page and when you go to the web page there's a giving tab you go on there and it's very easy to sign up and do that um, there's also the mail snail mail so look up our address on the web and it can come on in through the mail we will take it anywhere it comes in okay and then the newest way is through text and this really works and it's amazing it's very easy you just go onto your texting page and you type in give and you type in the number which i believe is going to be displayed on our screen but it's is one five one two eight six six two one four one if anybody wants to hop up and do that and we will do that for you so um did i get the wrong number oh my goodness okay five one two eight six six two one two one Oh, wrong again. Okay, it's on the screen. Look what's on the screen. All right, so do that if you can. Thank you for being faithful with your giving, and we really appreciate that. And if you have any hassles giving, give us a call, and we'll help you do that. And then also another very important part is prayer requests. We really want to stay connected with you, and if you have a prayer request, please go to our web page once again. There is a place there that you can click on that says Connect. And right down there is a place to place your prayer requests. Please put them in. They can stay private or be public where we will send them out and get the church to agree with you to pray with us. And then last but not least are a few announcements. And one of them is that the youth will be meeting tonight on Zoom. And uh, we encourage your youth to be a part of that. At 8 o'clock tonight, click on with Trey and Shay. And they're going to meet up with you and have a good time together with the youth. Youth, invite your friends to be on it and to join in. And then tomorrow night, I believe Greg is going to be doing some worship and an exhortation with you guys. So make sure you just um, click wherever we come on live that you are notified. And then whenever we come on live, you will be notified. So thank you once again to everybody. And hey, hang in there. I know this is tough for everybody. Um, this is something we've never done before and experienced in this nation. But, you know, God is still the same yesterday, today, and forever, and He never changes. So just keep your eyes on Him and do what you know is right. And let's see what God does through all this stuff going on and how He ends up displaying His glory. All right, well, I'm going to step aside and let Pastor come in and greet you all and to do His teaching for you tonight. All right. Thank you, Cheryl. And I uh, appreciate all you guys that have tuned in by the Internet, by Facebook. And like Cheryl was saying, just thank you for the patience you're showing as well. Had a bit of a mess here on Sunday. It was our first time to try 
uh, doing this on uh, live like this and uh, we figure some things out technically that hopefully you're going to see this whole thing um, live with no buffering and no delays. Amen. I'm talking here um, tonight about what matters most to what does matter most, of course, is going to be prayer because uh, it's going to take the prayers of God's people to see this, this virus going backwards. We're already seeing answered prayers in, in uh, individuals' lives, but I also believe in, in corporate ways we're seeing God answering prayer for cities, for even for nations, and uh, God's giving wisdom to our leaders as well, but uh, God wants us to keep on praying for the people who actually are the governors, the mayors, the decision makers, our president, in this time of crisis. Um, I heard from our, our former pastor years ago, powerful man of God named Larry Lee from uh, Church on the Rock in Rockwall, Texas, who taught on prayer. He had 300,000 intercessors praying for an hour a day back in the 80s, and um, we saw some tremendous things happening in a good way for our country because of that. But he made a very powerful statement that really has stuck with me all these years. He said years ago that the uh, first and biggest revelation when we, go to, when we get to heaven is to see the glory, the majesty, the beauty of Jesus Christ, of God the Father, the Holy Spirit. This is the splendor of heaven, of eternity, and all that's there in God's kingdom that our eyes cannot comprehend, our mind can't comprehend, our eyes have never seen. But he said the second biggest revelation, which kind of surprised me, and also I agree with this, is going to be the revelation of what prayer could have done, what prayer could have done. You know, again, Jesus Christ himself, the Son of God, God in the flesh, you're going to find throughout the entire Bible, one thing he was very, very consistent with was he was a man, the God of prayer. Even right up until the cross, he was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, pleading with the disciples, could you not tarry for one hour with me in this time that I'm going to be facing the cross? And I believe in this hour again today, in the year 2020, Prophetically, it's called, prophetically it's called the year of vision, the year of the mouth. Well, people didn't realize why that actually was. We're starting to see, I think, now around us why it is the year of the mouth, the year of the eye, the year of seeing. Because we're seeing a lot of things around us where the enemy would try to take advantage. The enemy is trying to get opportunities on the body of Christ upon the world at large. The enemy is trying to sow fear, discord, anxiety, strife and family trouble, economic problems and all of the above. But again, the Bible is very clear. It tells us, this is 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, that if my people called by my name humble themselves and pray, and they'll seek my face and turn from their evil ways, I will hear from heaven, I will heal their land. I really believe that God's desire is to heal this land, to heal families, heal people. And God, again, is able to take what is bad and somehow turn it to the good. Prayer is something that I've been involved with myself from the time I was in my early 20s. I've been blessed to be around prayer warriors like Sister Lindsay of Christ for the Nations, like Dick Eastman from Colorado Springs, people again like Larry Lee, people again overseas like Fred Roberts, and just people of prayer. My own father, who's passed on to go to heaven years ago, was a man of prayer. My grandmother was a person of prayer, and I believe her prayers are what helped to get my father drawn to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and our whole family receive Christ through that as well. I've seen what prayer does in small ways, in big ways, and prayer mainly is agreeing with God and also tapping into the supernatural, that things take place that, uh, in, a, in a supernatural way that God, that man could not do in himself. It's by prayer that Cheryl and I are now living in Austin, Texas. From 1994, we've lived here. It's because we're people of prayer that God let us, led us, God has guided us since we got married back in 1981. Every step of the way, because of prayer, we have ears that are hearing God's voice for the most part. And God has been faithful. God has blessed us beyond, beyond measure in so many great ways. But because we're people that are praying and listening for that response that God gives. It's because of prayer that I even have the wife I have from South Africa, 10,000 miles away. God brought her here miraculously. And there's a whole story in itself as well. But I know that God again does the impossible. God also brought our own uh, third child to us. We had decided years ago to only have two children, and it was very, very clear to us by God's voice, by God's spirit, to have one more child. And so praise God that Sarah is alive today. Her first baby, her name's little uh, Ruth Ann, is now four months old. And uh, even the miracles that our own daughter Sarah went through back in 2007, where she almost died three times in emergency surgery by a very, very rare disease of uh, arthritis of the blood vessels. God did tremendous healing in her body, her organs. Right now she's stable. She's in remission. 
and uh, she's uh, going on and honoring the things of God. Prayer did miracles in her behalf. Prayer brought us to our church. Prayer has done so many things for us. I really cannot emphasize enough, this must be a time for God's people to start praying. And if you haven't been a person of prayer on a regular basis up until now, I'm saying now is a good time to start. And if it means five minutes a day, if it means 10 minutes a day, the timing, uh, how long you pray, is not the main thing that God is after. The main thing God is after is would you take and agree with God in what he wants to do for our nation and the nations and families and individuals in this hour, in this season. There are prayer examples throughout the entire Bible, and the New, the New Testament, of course, is no exception for that. I want to deal with Ephesians chapter 1. It gives us some guidelines to help us pray for ourselves, to pray for our family, and also to pray for needs around us in our nation as well. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 16 through 18, I'm reading the New King James Version, and it says, I do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Now, one of the greatest gifts I can give to you is actually taken to clarify and bring clarity to you on what prayer is all about, how powerful prayer really is. I'm talking again tonight about what uh, matters in prayer. What God desires and what God wants, first of all, is he wants the written word of God, which is called the Logos, word of God, was on black and white paper and ink. He wants it to become a thing called rhema. And that word rhema means reveal, revelation. God wants to take and reveal what he's saying to us in the Bible. But also God wants to give us what's called rhema words. There's a word that God would have for a nation in a season, that God would have for a family, an individual, that God would have for a church. And so God wants to take the written word of God, the scriptures, and give you and all of us rhema words of God that are scriptures in due season. I can't tell you again many times that God has brought to us scriptures that are exactly the right verse, the right scripture at the right time. And it's brought to us uh, just tremendous breakthroughs and blessings by hearing God's word. It also has brought faith because faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God as well. And I really believe that God's releasing an anointing upon his people to have ears that hear what the spirit of God is saying to them. You must not take and succumb to the clutter around us that's trying to bring fear and is trying to bring anxiety and is trying to take and distort and even quench God's voice in this hour and in this season. You know, in Job chapter 42, in verse 5, Job was a, a guy we have known. went through all those trials, tribulations there where the devil was allowed to take his children, take his goods, his, take his barn, his livestock, his money, his livelihood, even his health. He was covered in boils from head to toe. He just wanted to die. He was in so much pain and discomfort. And then we know at the end of Job, around chapter 42, God shows up. God takes and restores everything back to Job that he had uh, lost at the very end of that book. And God starts speaking to Job in very, very clear ways and shows that Job, I'm not just the God of the hand, the God that's here just to give you things and be like a, a spiritual Santa Claus. I am also the God of the face, the God of relationships. I am Father, Abba, Daddy God. Now I've learned that God is a God of love, a God of compassion, a God of mercy. God wants to have relationships with his people and one thing about a, about a prayer life is that it actually helps to cultivate that relationship with you and God together communicating together listening talking listening talking and having God inter interact with you in spiritual ways so in Job 42 verse 5 Job finally says I've heard of you by the hearing of my natural ears but now my eyes see you and that's what God wants for his people in this hour this season he wants the people of God to take and start seeking his face, not just his hand. Now, praise God, I hope you all, you all have enough uh, toilet paper and enough canned goods and enough milk and, and water and, and, and bacterial killer and so forth in your, in your, in your uh, pantry, in your house. But the main thing, again, that God's telling us is that your body does matter to me, says God, but your spirit man matters even more because your body only lives for 80 90, 70 years, 100 years on this earth, and then it goes away. But your spirit man's gonna live forever and evermore. 
And God wants us to keep the main thing, the main thing, and that is that Jesus Christ is to be, wants to be Lord of our lives, center of our lives, right up until the day we take our last breath. Remember again how also the, the seven sons of Sceva, it says in Acts chapter 19, they were taken and following uh, Paul around. And um, these guys were trying to cast out demons using the name of Jesus, yet they were not believers, they weren't Christians. They were just secular, natural people trying to take and wow the crowds by using power gifts of driving out demons in Jesus' name. They got a hold of one guy who was possessed by demons, and the Bible says that the demon manifest and overpowered all seven of them, ripped their clothes off, beat them up, and sent them running, and said to them, Jesus I know, Paul we've heard about, but who are you? And what is being said here again is, God wants to know us, the spirit realm needs to know us. Your name needs to be known, not just in heaven, but also in hell, because you're causing damage to the kingdom of darkness, all right? So one of the greatest gifts you can do is again, give clarity to um, what prayer is all about. I found that some, uh, some, one of the problems you face also is that things that are fixed or that are, I mean, sorry, that are broken around us need to get fixed, but how do they get fixed? And if anything's right now being broken around us in our society, the only God can fix, only God will fix. Now there's four things that Paul prays for them about in Ephesians chapter one, verse 16 through 18, that I wanna talk about now, rest of this time. He says, first of all, in Ephesians chapter one, he says that you might know God better, that you might know him better. I pray that you might know God better. The book of Daniel, one verse here says, in the last days, those who know their God they will be strong and they will do exploits. That word know is a Hebrew word. It's the same intimate word used where it says Adam knew Eve and produced offspring. They had a son. God wants to know us in an intimate spiritual fashion. Not just again the God of the hand, but the God of the face. The God of the eyes. The God who is, is Abba, Daddy God. The God who says, I'm going to stick closer to you than a friend will stick closer, closer to you. I'm going to be like, uh, call you the apple of my eye. I'm going to call you a person who's redeemed. I'm going to call you my beloved. I'm going to call you a person who's precious to me, dear to me. And God loves us. God is with us. And in this hour of this season, no matter how uh, bleak things may look around us, both now or for the future in the natural realm, I want to remind you again, God won't leave you nor forsake you. The same God that saved you, that now lives in you by the Holy Spirit, is working in your behalf every minute of every day. Now prayer, prayer time, will actually give God the opportunity to make that real to you. To actually um, cause divine coincidences to take place. Cause you to start seeing scriptures in the way that God wants you to. So God wants you to know him better. You know, I don't know, or I know about our governor, a guy named Greg Abbott, but I don't really know him in an intimate fashion. And many folks know about God, many folks know about Jesus, and they, they see him as a good man or a good person, a good God, but they don't really know him as a friend in an intimate type way. Prayer cultivates you knowing God not just by your, your brain and your mind and your, and your soul, but knowing him also by your spirit. And um, I praise God that I do know God in that way. Okay, so we're going to move on. As for those, again, that know him, those that do know him are going to start knowing him better and better. This is an hour and a season right now. Again, we're in the midst of crisis where God's going to also take those who have known God in an intimate type way and take them to new heights and new levels. And God also wants our focus not to be just on ourselves, our things, and our families. He wants us also to start looking out at our neighbors, our neighborhood, our cities, the nations, our country, our leaders, and be praying for them, be thinking of them, and, and asking even God, what can I do? in a practical realm of my giftings, my surplus, my abundance, to help them out perhaps in some way. Secondly, it says in Ephesians chapter one, that the eyes of your heart will be enlightened. So God says our heart, so that's you got eyes, so those are spiritual eyes attached to that. You know, um, God wants you to start seeing even what's happening today the way he sees it. There are giants all around us. There's mountains all around us. And some of those mountains seem to be getting bigger all the time. We must be people that can see the God behind the mountains, the God behind the giants, and the God who says, this world is mine and the fullness thereof. You know, I was taught a big lesson about this way back about um, over 20 years, 30 years ago. Whenever I was um, going to a church, a full gospel church in Wichita, Kansas, 
And um, close friend of mine at the church, he was very disappointed there. He felt the people there were just singing hymns and they were, they were kind of dead, he thought. There was not a lot of life there he didn't feel. He wanted to see more emotions. He wanted to see more goosebumps. He wanted to see more healings, miracles, things happening, breaking loose and so forth. And he had a very kind of a critical spirit against the people that was in the church. And so he told me one day, he said, you know what, I want to do one. I want to take it. I want to bring a casket to the church on a Sunday. And I want to put a mirror in that casket and have the whole church kind of file in front of the casket there and look down and see themselves as what they really are, a dead church with dead people in the church. I thought, man, that, that just really sounds kind of harsh. That really sounds just a little bit judgmental. And so a few more weeks or months beyond that went by, and I had a very, very strong encounter with God myself that changed my entire life and perspective. And from that encounter with God, I realized how much God loves people, how much God appreciates his people. And God's not into what we do so much in the outward way. He's more into what our heart is all about. As I went to that church again, a few, a, a few days beyond that experience with God, as they began to take and sing their hymns and, and sing their choruses and so forth, where they always had, tears came down my eyes, came down my face uncontrollably, not because I was getting emotional, but because the Spirit of God came on me and Holy Spirit began to speak to my heart, speak to my, my, own, my own spirit inside of me and said, I am so proud of these people. I love these people so much. What they're doing right now is a blessing to my heart and to me. And I began to realize that God didn't see the people of that church the way that my, my friends saw them. Uh, I'm not sure what caused that critical heart he had himself, but I know that God appreciates his people and realize this disaster around us, this crisis around us is not because God is displeased with you or God hates you or God's against you and God's trying to get revenge on us. It's because we're in a world right now that's called a fallen world where there's disease and sickness around us. There's also a real devil who wants to do real bad things and kill and steal and destroy. The good news is every destructive thing the devil can bring against the people of God or against the world has already been paid for by the blood and by the power of Jesus Christ. And so because we're made more than conquerors through Christ who strengthens us, it's time for the church to rise up in prayer come against the works of darkness and declare that what the enemy again means for evil, God will turn this to the good, but also what the enemy means to drag out for a long time shall have a spirit of brevity put upon it and it shall be cut off and it shall quit and cease sooner than we actually would see take place in the natural realm because God would work supernaturally in behalf of the nation. So I want to stop right there not to teach my teaching, but I want to stop and say this. Uh, I encourage you guys to be praying for your children, your grandchildren, yourself, your spouse, a hedge of protection around them every day that no fiery dart of Satan can quench or penetrate. Uh, declare that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. No sickness, no disease shall dwell in it. Declare that our city is um, coronavirus free Amen. and declare that our leaders have wisdom. Our nurses are protected. Our doctors are protected. Our first responders are protected. Our grocery workers are protected. All those that are in harm's way in the natural realm are protected in Jesus' name. And believe God also that we're going to see this thing rekindle a fresh hunger in the people of God for a move of God and for a viable relationship with the Lord and a desire to pray and to praise and worship and be near to him like we never have been before. There's stuff that's in our hearts sometimes, in our minds, that God wants renewed, that God wants taken away. And the Bible says if you read the Bible on a consistent basis, there will be a washing of the water of the word that will take place. And actually will take and cleanse your mind and cleanse out your stinking thinking and give you a new mind, a mind of Christ. So you can start seeing things and thinking the way God does, not the way the natural man does, our culture does, or the, even the devil himself would want us to. Uh, in, in this time and season. So let's read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. Ephesians 5, 26 says that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word. The word sanctify means to be set apart for a holy, divine, noble purpose. And so God wants our minds to be sanctified, to be set apart by the washing of the water of the word. That means that our mind needs to agree with what does the Bible say? What does God's word say? What is God saying in the midst of our crisis? We rejoice in God's cleansing work. 
And also we ought to understand that God has set us apart for, for a instruments of righteousness, not just for our sake, but for the sake of our community and people and friends around us. So one thing that gives me comfort again about longevity, about not dying prematurely, about even getting sick, is I don't take foolish, uh, do things foolishly. I don't touch the wrong things, hopefully. I wash my hands. I do what I'm told to do by scientists or doctors if it's, if it's, if it's actually good or good for me. But um, I, I take it, I'm, I try to make sure here again that I take and I say, Lord, I am actually set apart for your, to be your instrument, to be your tool, to be used by you to bless others. Keep me alive on this earth as long as you want me alive. And I declare I am healthy and I am strong and I am not going to be able to be utilized by you, God, if I'm sick or in bed and uh, laying on my back. So I'm declaring I'm able to take and be healthy and strong and rise up every day and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day because God's got good things for me to do this day and to be this day and just to spend time also, of course, with him. Thirdly, number three, uh, Paul prays they might also know the hope to which he has called them. Um, if we never understand to get our hearts clear on why we're actually even alive, we live a most miserable life on the earth. They did a survey Christians did for, uh, for just unbelievers and non-church, non-Christian people across our nation a few weeks or a few months ago. And they asked them a question, if you could take and, and have God manifest and ask God one question and God would, would answer that question without judging you or criticizing you, God would just answer the question back to you. They say, what question would you ask God and get an answer for? The surprising thing was, number one question I'm going to ask God is, why am I on this earth? What's my purpose? Why am I alive? Well, if you don't, understand, don't realize that God wants to be the center of our lives, we're made in God's image and God's likeness. God's got a plan for us. The Bible says from the foundation of the earth, we're going to find ourselves aimlessly going around doing the cultural thing around us to take and accumulate things, accumulate stuff, try to receive the praise of man, try to get accolades perhaps, and try to have heaven on earth. And God wants to bless us, and God wants to give us heaven on earth in his own way, but God wants to give us contentment and peace and joy, regardless of what our circumstances are like. And what prayer does is prayer helps us, again, understand what the hope is, why we're on the earth, what the purpose of God is. Because through prayer, I found that God opens up doors. God puts us in the right place at the right time to, to be in the path that God's ordained for us to take. Um, God leads us, God guides us, God gives instructions to us, God confirms things, God cuts off things, God brings sometimes what's called a check in your spirit that's, that's the wrong thing to do, the wrong person to become a close friend with perhaps. There's so many things that God does to help and bless us. By those who will pray and start by through, through prayer, they start discerning the voice of God, they start discerning God's um, leadings, and they start also realizing what God loves and what God hates. And they reject the one and they cling to and pursue after the other. Okay, so moving on. One of the key verses here is Proverbs chapter 13, verse 12. The New International Version says here, Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. And so the word longing there. It actually means a border, a boundary, and a desire. So it's telling us that there's like we're born with this soul, this body, that's got boundaries, it's got borders, it's got hindrances, and there's longings we've got, but we've got to realize again, the very first longing all mankind has is to have a personal walk with God himself. I've heard it said there's a vacuum inside of every human's heart, exactly the shape of Jesus Christ, and only Jesus can fill that vacuum. And so prayer always begins with making Jesus Christ, making God the Lord, not just Savior, the Lord of your life. He has full access to everything you have, everything you are, everything that you own. Not because he's a dictator and because he wants to control us, but because God knows what's best for us and God wants to put his nature in us that he might bless us and help us have a life that's full of a tree of life type life where there's going to be a, a life things happening around us breaking loose around us all the time and not that tree of knowledge of good and evil that actually brings a curse in the long run uh, for our lives um, so that word again longing means desire it means border it means boundary 
This also goes along with 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 2 Corinthians 10, 13 says, We, however, we apostles, we don't boast beyond measure, but within the limits, the boundaries of the sphere which God appointed us, a sphere which especially would include you. So Paul's saying there again that God's created in, in, the, in, the, in the world a sphere for us to live in, to operate in, function in, to bear the most fruit and be content in doing that. You might have heard it said before that um, if, if you find a job you love to do, if you find a workplace that you love going to every, every morning and clocking in, clocking out, or whatever you do there to work and love it, it's like you're not really even working. Because you love what you do. That's what God wants for every person on the earth is to find their destiny, find their calling, find the boundaries, find the sphere that God has wired you for. And when you find that, you're going to find yourself actually looking forward to waking up every morning and doing the work of God, not because you have to, but because you want to. Amen. God wants to do that for us. Uh, Psalm 37, 4, my favorite verse perhaps in the Bible, it says, delight yourself in the Lord and he'll give you the desires of your heart. That means God takes your desires and makes them line up with his desires, and you're gonna find yourself loving what God loves, hating what God hates, and you're gonna be finding yourself loving God from that as well. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. The word deferred, it means hope prolonged, hope that is bronzed, and hope that is tall. You know, the word the bronze in the Bible is a word for judgment. And God is saying, again, it's like there's a tall bronze wall around us of judgment. And the truth is, all of us that are born upon the face of the earth will spend eternity in heaven or a place of darkness away from God, which can be called Sheol or hell or lake of fire. There's many words for that in the Bible. But the main thing is you're not with God for eternity. And the Bible even calls that a place of torment. Now, God doesn't want anybody to go to a place like that. God wants all folks to come to him. But it's like there's a barrier and a bronze wall, a tall wall up there. But the good news is this. Every human has enough faith to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Any human, any person that calls upon the name of Jesus and says, I can't save myself. I need a Savior. I have sinned because all have sinned. All have come short of what God wants for, for human's life. I can't save myself. My grandma's goodness can't do it. My, my church attendance can't do it. My giving can't do it. My good works can't do it. All it takes confessing with my mouth and believing in my heart who Jesus Christ is to be saved. And so what God is telling us is there's a big, tall, bronze wall up all around each one of us in the spiritual realm that we in the natural realm cannot go over and cannot go through and cannot tunnel under. But praise God, because Jesus Christ died upon the cross and rose again, the Bible says that veil is ripped in two, and now all of us have free access to salvation through Jesus Christ. As I'm talking right now, maybe I'm talking to somebody who um, your heart has been on fire and with God in years past. Maybe it's not today, it's not tonight. And so God may be calling you back into a place of fellowship with him once again. Realize again that like the prodigal son, he, God is right there with arms open wide, with a ring to put back on your finger, with the road we've been put back upon your back, sandals for your feet, and he's going to kill that fatted calf all over again because God desires and God's even making ways to draw you back to himself because God loves you that much. Psalms chapter 16, verse 5 and 6, New International Version again, it says, Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me, notice this, in pleasant places. Praise God. The boundary lines that God draws for you is not to take and torture you and say, and say God's my dictator. God is, is my controller. God is a hard man. Your boundary line is going to be in pleasant places. I found the people that are closest to God are full of the most, most joy the most contentment, the most peace, the most happiness. And when things like this, coronaviruses, whatever it may be, take place, they don't like it so much either, but they don't let it shake them and break them and cause them to lose hope and lose faith in what God's still doing in their lives. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. 
Your inheritance begins on the earth. And so God wants you to understand again that no matter what you're going through right now, your inheritance is still intact. All you've done for God has been stored up in heaven also, where no moth, no rust, no fire can take and deteriorate. And God is saying that you're going to have a delightful inheritance, not just in the life to come, but also on the earth as well. Now, there are three great days in our life, three great days. The first great day is the day you're born, the natural realm. That's called your birthday. And I want to give a shout out to all those having birthdays today, this week at, at Tree of Life Church. We mentioned your name on Sunday. Hope you saw that. I gave you a scripture as well. It got kind of delayed there, some of the buffering and so forth. You might, might not have heard that, but um, it's on some tape. So just get the one in the afternoon if you can do that, if you missed that. Day you're born is the first great day. Number two great day is the day you're born again. Nicodemus asked Jesus Christ, a wise Pharisee. Jesus